My name is Bill Redensel, and uh, I'm one of two people that are essentially the caretaker of the Motor Company's historic vehicle collection. Uh, back in 2004, uh, I saw an ad in a motorcycle publication uh, from Harley Davidson Motor Company, and they were looking for a motorcycle restorer for a shift. I showed the ad to my wife, and, and I asked her, I said, do you think I should put my resume in? She said, if you don't, I'll divorce you. Uh, so I put my resume in, and 10 years later, here I am, uh, taking care of the company's historic motorcycle collection. My official job title is uh, Motorcycle Restorer Conservator, and that's a little bit of a misnomer. It's very rare we ever do a restoration. Um, being that our bikes are brand new and have been kept off the assembly line, what we do is conservation, which is to take them apart, clean each and every single piece and put it back together. We don't repaint, we don't replate, uh, and we don't try and replace any parts if they don't need it. Uh, we always say that you, know, you can restore a bike a thousand times, but it's only original once, and we want to try and keep these in that original state. What I love about this collection of bikes is, you know, a lot of museums when they start, they have to go out into the public and find a bunch of different artifacts to populate their museum, you know, and to for the four founders to have that foresight to collect and save and keep all these brand new items right off the assembly line in this collection uh, makes it second to none. It's, it's, it's truly brilliant and, and there's nothing else like it anywhere in the world. People always say, you know, what their first, you know, Harley Davidson was or their introduction into Harley and they talk, you know, the first thing they ever did was they got to ride on a, you know, a little Shortster MC65 or X90. My, my first introduction to Harley Davidson was uh, actually more like this. Uh, my family were all big golfers and I hated everything about golf, but they would let me come along and I got to drive the golf cart. And uh, you know, I logged a lot of miles on one of these things and you know, it's, it's all those uh, kind of crazy memories that you have being on the golf course, getting to drive the, the golf cart. You know, and people don't realize, you know, talking 110 years worth of manufacturing, you know, we did a lot of things. We made boats, we made motorhomes, and at one time we were the largest golf car manufacturer in the world. A lot of people don't know, or, or you know, when they come to the museum they go, oh, wow, I forgot about that. Now, the Clubs and Competition Gallery is really my favorite gallery of, of the museum. Uh, I spent a lot of time researching this. This is an era that I really love. I love the, the, the board track era. Uh, you know, a Harley-Davidson 8-valve motorcycle would maintain an average lap speed of 100 miles an hour and could you know, really reach up to 130 miles an hour in the, in the straightaways. And so you imagine on this rough sawn 2x4 track and you blow out a tire and you go skidding down across a racetrack and uh, pick up splinters in your body and they haul you to the infirmary and they you know, pull splinters out of your body for nine hours. And it's, it's, it, it was truly America's first... Uh, what I would call extreme sport. I believe the four founders, you know, did not embrace racing. They didn't like it, but they were businessmen too. And so they had to say, hey, you know, we're missing a really great opportunity here and, and get involved. And, and, you know, racing is part of the company. From there, really, uh, you know, has been with us ever since and been a big part of who we are and, and how we've succeeded as a company. You know, the old adage, you know, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Uh, it's, it's true. It's, there's a lot of truth in that. The bike on the cover of this Harley-Davidson dealer is, is identical to uh, a bike that I personally own, a 1914 10S. Uh, I'm really lucky to have this bike and, and lucky enough to actually uh, have ridden it across the country. I rode it from Kitty Hawk, North Carolina to uh, Santa Monica, California in 16 days. I figure I have more miles on a board track racer than even the, the best racers of the day. <laughs> I'd have to say of everything that I've been involved in acquiring here at the archives, this is probably uh, my, my favorite bike of that. There's kind of an old urban legend about a uh, guy that buys a Corvette, puts it in a barn, goes to Vietnam and is killed and uh, it never ends up being true. Um, but this bike is truly it. Uh, it was owned by a fellow 
Um, got it as a high school graduation present. Uh, became a tail gunner in a B-17 in World War II. Uh, was subsequently killed in action. And his family kept the bike, but not only the bike, but all of his belongings and kept it for years and years. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, in the museum we tell stories about all the GIs that returned and formed motorcycle clubs and chop bikes, but uh, we never get a chance to really tell that story about those that gave the ultimate sacrifice uh, so that the company could remain to this day, and uh, this was a perfect opportunity to do that. Yeah, there's an old saying that goes, uh, you know, find something you love to do and you'll never work another day in your life. And, and I truly live that every day.